So last year we we had you on, as we said, talking baseball. You uh, you skirted around the word that you wouldn't say, but I would say, which was strike, and everyone was. You, yeah, I don't you were care saying anymore. it, but everyone is saying it's coming. There's going to be a big dispute after winter meetings last year. Mm-hmm. We walked away. Everyone walked away, and then they decided on some new rules, and they said, "And we're going to open up negotiations now, so we can tr- give ourselves the most amount of time to get on the same page. By the time it comes up in two years or whatever, like whenever it is." I thought maybe that would have helped and changed some things. Now we have, <clears throat> there's so many issues. I mean, the arbitration system's broken. The non-tender system's broken. But the big dogs last year, Machado, Harper, they did get paid. Yes, they did. And we are getting a lot of movement this year and guys getting paid. But, but, but there are a lot of things broken. So where are we? So Better me, or worse? So let me ask you a question. <laughs> 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 I was saving that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you say the big players got paid last year. Why was there no inflation from A-Rod's contract to 2018? Well, I mean, that's a good call. Uh, but, I, I mean... No, I'm asking. How did A-Rod in 2000-whatever get... What, what was it, 10 for 250? Something like that. Yeah, or what, 252, wasn't 252, it? 252, yeah. So... Well, I mean, wasn't, well, well, wasn't now that it's looked, AAV. So, like, what, like, that's what everyone looks wasn't at. Wasn't that looked? No, like, that's what agents sell. That's still stupid. <laughs> I well, mean, I mean, if the luxury cap is going to be a thing, you have to look at that. The luxury cap is going to be what destroys baseball. Like, I mean, wasn't wasn't the A Rod contract? A, and and again, maybe this is wrong, but I feel like it was viewed that like that was too much money. And I know that's that's not how things are supposed to work, but it was viewed like, that way. Yeah, like by t- who t- though? Like by well, who? It, it felt like by the who? Texas Rangers uh-huh. were were crippled by that contract. Why were they crippled? No, let's they stay on this. They were a poorly run organization. No, 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 no. How did that cripple them? We're going to totally stay on this. I'm taking over. I mean, they, <laughs> they were saying that... Who's they? Say these words. Don't the you Texas pro- are, No, don't I don't know. So I, baseball. Pa- baseball in general. What, I, I'm what, not going to say names because I didn't know no, the I don't names mean, I, don't mean, I don't mean names. What side? What are you fans. Ta- talking? Fans. We're talking about, like, fans, right? And or... or No, no. Or, 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 that's what I'm asking. Or owners. What do you mean? Do you mean fans? I'm saying all of it. I, I think... No, separate that. Besides, that. besides agents. Everyone outside of agents said and that the A-Rod probably. contract was... Okay, so, like, separate the everyone. You say fans and ownership. What the fuck do I care about ownership and fans' input on a contract? Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, but say, stay on that, because that's part of the problem when you guys say, too much. This is what owners have conditioned fans to say. You are saying to me literally that was too much of the owner's money. Yeah. Why do you as fans even remotely give not you guys specifically? I don't, yeah. No, no. But well, why I mean, do fans give a shit about what owners But this this happens just in America. But that's because of owners. And well it's because of the rich people. Yes. It's like the same problem with the TV show Friends when they were like, We need a million dollars per episode and the public was like, What the fuck you guys are blah 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 and Chandler or uh, yeah. uh, Matthew Perry went on TV and he was like we just want a percentage of what everyone else. If we don't get the million, someone's getting the million. Well, that's the point. And, but but yeah, the, as a society, we're conditioned, and, and because what, the, we're conditioned right. by the people with all the money. But and it's, ridic- telling, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's insanity. Every single team could afford every single player without losing anything. But the luxury cap does change that. No, it doesn't. In what you, it only it changes it in the sense that it acts as a superficial salary cap. That's the only. If you were an owner, if you owned a baseball team Absolute. and you had those in place, you would. You would duck under that cap every three years or whatever the rules are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What's your point? So that's hard to give away, give out bigger contracts when you have to balance it every three years, right? That's a choice from ownership, and fan, that's not going to change until fans get pissed off. Uh, and, the, and you blame the players for this. Not you. I'm but so, you, so, so what do, you, do you think there should be a minimum then? Do I think there is a minimum? No, no, for like for oh, teams. Oh, teams. Like, should there oh. be a. No, because if we am- enter that Pandora's box, they're going to ask for a cap. If we say we want a floor, the inverse they is that we want a cap. And is there a situation where that would be more beneficial to players now versus what the system is currently? Probably. But do you know why that is? Because owners are not participating in good faith in what the actual system is supposed to be, which is a free market, which it is not. Well, the, yeah. So the biggest problem with the system. Um, besides, like, owners not wanting to spend and fans being conditioned by the owners. That's a whole bigger thing. But yeah. the actual, the actual uh, bargaining agreement that is in place right now, mm-hmm. it favors kids that make the big leagues at 19 to 22 and hit free agency mm-hmm. at 26 to 29. Yes. And if you break in 
Uh, Reggie, Mc, Reggie McClain, my client, 26-year-old rookie. Yeah, he's fucked. Luke Voigt for the Yankees, 28-year-old uh, rookie. Yep. Fucked. Will yep. never get paid. Doesn't, doesn't hit free agency until he's, what, 34? Yeah, yeah. and then he's never going to get paid. So, and, and I think the goal was to protect young kids. Like, if you make it to the big leagues, you're going to have the security of no, no, seven no. years. No, 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 no. The, the reason... I, I There's hate. Tori. You want to ask him for your autograph? I would, but we're working. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that sucks. <laughs> um, so... He'll, he'll like this conversation. This would be hilarious. Oh, my God. I would tell him. I don't give a shit. He'll... <laughs> I was going to say something so yeah. bad right now. <laughs> we'll reel that in a little bit. Yeah, I don't care. What's he going to do? Write me a letter. Um, and I'd respond, can you sign this card? <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Tory. Here you go. I wouldn't say sorry. Um, <laughs> um, no. Um, go back to your point. I got distracted by Joe Tory. My, my point is, why, do, why was the system in place? Okay, yeah, yeah. So the system's in place. The system was in place always to protect the veteran players. As long as the veteran players' salaries were preserved... Um, the PA didn't care about selling out the younger guys. So you have a situation where um, draft picks, minor leaguers, um, pre-arb guys all get eaten up by the system and very few guys make money, and, and that's, that's capital. So this, I, I'm horrified to ask this question. Mm -hmm. Commissioner for a day, mm -hmm. you get to rewrite the rules. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it... Is it just so much less team control? Like, what? what is the solution? Oh, how would I fix oh, Yeah. Get it, guys to free agency sooner and eliminate arbitration. or but make, like what's, Eliminate the arbitration system as it is and change it to something better over less years. Just cut it down. Yeah. Like cut it in half. Yeah, but, but, but what incentive does ownership have to do that? None. None. Did you see what, what – this is public, so I'm not breaking anything here, but did you see what Manfred said to the PA? No. It was in Calcaterra's article a few weeks ago. I saw it online. Craig wrote that – um, there was a meeting with the PA and, and, uh, and, and uh, the MLB, and Manfred said, or, or I'm sorry, the PA said, you know, we're not going to give up stuff. This, we need to make gains. We need to make gains in the next CBA. And MLB's office goes, uh, or Manfred goes, well, we're not, you know, what do we get? And PA's answer is, we give you labor peace, so there's going to be no work salvage. Right. And then Manfred's answer to that was, we're not giving you anything for labor peace. <laughs> So that's cool. That's how we Tough start. Tough negotiation. That's not much of a negotiation. Or like the other, the other thing that everyone's, you know, it's like, you know, the owners are totally open to changing the system as long as it doesn't change the finances. It's like, oh, okay, thanks. For anyone that's watching or listening that is completely unaware of what we're talking about, the system that's currently in place is once a player breaks into the MLB, um, you're not supposed to say the MLB and people always correct me. MLB. When, uh, yeah, because it's not the Major League Baseball. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sorry. To those people on YouTube, would love to leave that comment. Once you break into MLB, you basically have three. Correct me, it's three years of team control where you're just gonna make the minimum, which is around five hundred. Five thirty-five. Yeah. Five thirty. Five hundred thirty-five grand, and then you have four years of arbitration, or is it three again? Three. Three, three years of arbitration, which basically the system kind of just takes you what you've done, your age, whatever it takes into account. Your, your baseball card stats that are super irrelevant now because yeah. you're not allowed yeah. to use analytics. You're not allowed to use most data, like analytics, in, yeah. in, in, in a arbitration. So you can't use spin rate. Can't yeah, use so there's arbitration if you agree on this number, and then that's year by year. Every year you have to go, and if you guys disagree, you have to go to arbitration. You have to – Well, like the way the hearings work is, you know, you, you pick a number as the player and the agent and the PA, and then the team picks a number, and then you have your case, and then the arbitrator picks one of the two numbers. He can't pick in between. Nope. Yeah. And you got to settle for that to happen. But there used to be a negotiating period before arbitration where you could negotiate, you could negotiate with the ball club right up until the hearing started. Like, like you could be there in a suit, getting ready for it, and then see them in the, the room and get it done. That's happened. And um, now teams are all something called file and trial, where once you decide to go to arbitration, they won't talk to you anymore. And then, and then you get shit talked by your own club. Yes, and oh, they yeah. tell a judge how bad you are like in Derek, front in that's, front of you. That's Derek such Jeter, baseball. Derek Jeter that's had to so do it, baseball. and uh, and and he said like you know it sucked. And Dallin Batances were a Yankee background. And then then recently, what the Yankees just did last offseason is they bought out, and a lot of people are doing. The Braves are doing this. A lot of guys are doing this. They're buying out. Yeah, the that's arbitration. A, that's, a, that's a thing. Uh, at a low AAV, which is average annual value. It's not just a low AAV. That's a low. Total. Yeah. Yeah. So they're buying it out. I, uh, as a as a dumb fan or whatever, I'm like, good, don't go to arbitration because then, like... You like, don't want our pitchers getting yelled at. I don't want Severino <laughs> to go find... I think some players are fragile, and when they go to that meeting... Some. 
I think yeah, I think Most. a lot. I think a-, a lot of humans are fragile. A- How about that? A- I wouldn't want to go to a room. AJ and have Burnett. My- AJ Burnett cried after his hearing. Did you hear this? And then vowed never to play for the Marlins again. Yeah, well, Adele and Batances was like, fuck that, because everyone was mean to him. But why, who, and no one would want to have to go to court right. fi- against your boss, and your boss oh is telling God. you how much you suck. In fairness, teams don't want to do that, but that's how the system is. I think, right. Well, I think that's why they're trying to, like, let's just buy out arbitration. So yeah, but they're not. They're, yeah, but that's still so. Every single one of those is club friendly. But, I mean, yeah. there is, uh, like, an injury. There is a, a fail-safe. Because, like... Um, that's, that's, the, that's the excuse every time, isn't it? But, uh, but I'm saying, in this current system, which we agree sucks and is bad... No, the system's fine. It's just broken. They're not uh, participating in it. If they did it in good faith, we wouldn't have these issues. But wouldn't, wouldn't like, Severino, what do you get, 70? I don't, I don't remember what he got. Whatever. He's it, not my guy. I can't comment. You say, so, like, he's got... Four years left. He's going to make five thirty-five, five thirty-five. Then probably like uh, whatever it is. It's like twelve, eleven, twelve, 10 or yeah, 10, yeah, eleven, thirteen, seventeen. It's like kind of what Kluber's yeah, path whatever, was, something yeah, like that. I saw it. Yeah. So if the total over those years is higher than what that would be, isn't it smart to just sign that? And then you're still a free agent when you're a free agent. You don't have to argue after every season. No, if you get that, that's injured, everybody's individual choice. I mean, some guys like it, some guys don't. I, I don't ever. I don't know what everybody's situation is in their lives. So, well, as an agent, you probably want to <clears throat> bet on the player. Always, but like there is injury risk. Like I understand buying out arbitration. I do think that they need to just. It doesn't feel like those deals that last year, in my opinion, all of them in the totality, not one specific deal. It feels like all of those were a reaction to what happened last off season. I think so. Yeah. As well. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Oh, so absolutely. that's that's not good. No. No, but because I, the owners created this marketplace where no one was getting an offer, and then they benefit from it from like, did you see what happened? Here, why don't you just take this? And, and it's like, oh, my the, God, the they're I fucking a, puppeteers. Yeah. The it, ones that were ridiculous were, I, I think, the Braves guys, Albies and Acuna, were like, they're the guys that we talked about who, they're what you said, the perfect storm. They got called up young. I mean, they're stars. Those are guys that, if they hit it right, I mean, they could have been star free agents at age 27, and they took these – Kind of odd team-friendly deals. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Josh's face was very exciting during I, that. I, I can't. I just I can't talk about players I don't work for specifically or I'll get not being I'll, I'll get kicked out of being an agent. But I I just everything's broken. And then we got two years to figure it out. And it it is better that they they agreed like we need to figure this out. I mean it's well, couldn't, they couldn't be worse. They didn't agree to that. There's I thought that was what I thought that's what came, that's happened. Not, it's so superficial. Okay. Like, if you're in ownership's position, what incentive do you have to open up these negotiations legitimately in good faith? And in my opinion, there's there's none. And I think it's all just window dressing. So is that scared way, of a strike? I, yeah. I'm not scared of it. It's going to happen. I no, no, no. The owners, they're only no, no they're not. They're they're not. They're, but they should be. That could no, be the only thing that they're like. Okay, we need to do this. Cause. They're not. As long as these owners don't lose money, they don't care what happens. In my opinion. Okay. Is, it doesn't need to make. Tell well, me. Okay, so this is important. So, what is the difference now between 1994? And that labor stoppage and what's going on now is that the composite of the ownership uh, membership, that club of 30 owners, the makeup of it is very different. In the 90s, you had Bud Selig and Mark Schott and, and Carl Lindner and, and all these small, t- but, but, you know, Selig, who, who was a car dealer. And you had all these, these, these less rich people owning these ball clubs who were financially dependent on, on their club. And now you have billionaires who own teams and literally don't care at all as long as they don't lose money. Yeah, don't tell Mets fans this because they're about to get the richest owner, yeah. Steve Cohen, and they think he's going to pour money and really care. But now you're no saying... No one cares about anything. It's just all, it's a <laughs> business. They, you know, it's, it's a business. And every, the lowest valued franchise in Major League Baseball is the Marlins at a billion dollars. And then I hear from fans who are all financial experts on Twitter, which is super oh, yeah. cool. Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, uh... The, the you know the Marlins just because their franchise valued at a billion dollars doesn't mean they have a billion dollars. Like wow, thanks for tweeting that. <laughs> <laughs> really eye opening stuff. I was like, did you mean to send this to so, me? So I I've got a question, and I I think the <laughs> you accidentally just sent something stupid. <laughs> this, this it might be the window dressing and stuff you were referencing before. Well, but what's changed? How long have they been talking? Well, that's in, what we don't know. In '94, there was also better music that we've already agreed on. There, so we there was we can music. agree to that, but. Um, last year at winter meetings, and there was, like, no action. But, there won't but, be here either. But the, the whole buzz was, well, already this free agency, there's been more yes. than at this point last yes, year. Yes, I which, agree. Again, and Moose is, got paid, and he hasn't you been know, paid in two years. Do you know why? 
because everyone saw last year that waiting didn't do shit. Yeah. yeah. So. But but the but the numbers aren't that bad either. Like Moose got paid pretty no well. Opinion, no opinion. <laughs> no opinion. Not players. You're asking the Moose wrong guy. got paid pretty good. Wheeler got paid pretty good. No, no, no opinion. Comment. No opinion on players that um, I don't work for. If so, last year it was the hot like everyone we talked to, and this isn't a slide at you. No, but no, I got everyone it. we talked to was like, yo, like this labor shit is real. Like yeah. shit's gonna go down. Now it has gotten quiet. I know Jimmy mentioned that like the two sides agreed to open up and talk. And that's I, not new. I I don't I don't want I don't want well I do obviously want you to overstep your boundaries. I'm but going to. You're you are the only person in our circle. Forty hours of being here mm-hmm. that With this have perspective. Heard, that have heard. Oh, they're all lying to you. Okay, <laughs> so that that's the window. There's dressing. no way you spoke to Calcaterra and he told you everything was fine. Uh, we had him on our history podcast. Yeah. There's no way Craig didn't tell you exactly what I'm saying. He, I, he, we'll have him on later. But, I was say, but he wrote an article. I feel like okay, so that's the difference. Like people would open with that last year. Like people would look around, give like, man, things because are because they can only see what's right in front of them. And I'm not saying like I'm this sage, but you know, they. they <laughs> I would like if you called yourself a sage. See I, I have. I've called myself <laughs> lots of things. They haven't stuck. You can't give yourself a nickname. Jake tried it with Rocky, but actually, what stuck was the toilet Nostradamus. That's funny. Not bad. Yeah, mine's stupid. My players just started calling me Jake Cuz. Oh, that works. I know. A Rod, it's, so, it's, so yeah. it's so easy. It's so easy. What would mine be? Yours would be J Store. Your job, Jimmy O'Brien. Well, be J O B. No, that's a good one. That's a that's a good one. J Store's not bad. It sounds like uh, some shitty Mine fam- family. Area. Mine sounds yeah. awesome because there's a Z in it. Because but, it's a good it's a good letter. But um, <laughs> they, uh, I anyone call you Cuzzo? Nah, like Lizzo. <laughs> 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 that yes. I, they have actually. Um, no, I just, uh, yeah, I, I have nothing more in depth than that. They're all lying to you. Everyone's mm-hmm. lying. Everyone's, so we should be worried as baseball fans. Yeah, every single person should be worried. Okay. Like, I mean, not even a little. What can fans do? They just nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. I lived. I lived through the '94 man. I was 12. It sucked. We lost baseball, and I went to spring training games to get autographs of replacement players. It was terrible. Well, at least we have a scandal to help us out right now. No comment. <laughs> hey, man, the steroids got us at, through the last strike, and now yeah. every team will just be legally allowed to cheat, and that will uh, get us through this this next labor stoppage. There's always going to be, as long as there's rules, people always try to circumvent them. 